Alright, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content, and let's just get right into the news. Before we start that, this is one of the newest shirts. It will be in the store today. Bridget will handle that for you. And uh, Breezy in the background holding the chat down. They come in dry fit, all colors, all that good stuff. Beast Mode activated part of the new Gym Star collection. We're going to try to flesh that out for you guys. If you don't see it by the end of the day, it will be there by either tomorrow morning or what do you think? Um, Saturday morning, Bridget? Yeah. She says she's going to try her best to get it up there today, but I have to get her to design. And who knows if that's going to happen. Anyway, on to the news. Blue screens, bro. Can we get those taken care of? I know that, like I said, I don't like to critique and, and complain about the game a whole lot, but the blue screens in the game are starting to be a little bit ridiculous. Even though I do like a lot of the things that happen in this newest patch, I feel like the blue screens are just a regression. We don't want to be going backward. We want to be going forward. Like I said, it's just like, like a Paul Abdul and MC Scat Cat. We take two steps forward. We take two steps back. Like, I love the game. But the game doesn't love me back. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so we come together opposites to track, man. You know what I'm talking about? The game don't love us back. But we do love the game. We're going to continue playing the game. We just, we're not complaining because we want to complain about the game. We're complaining about certain things because we want this game to be the best that it can be. It's like, it's like how your parents get on your case all the time. They see your potential and they want you to be the best version of yourselves. Well, this is what we want for NBA 2K. We can see the potential in this game in the, two top, in the 2K20 iteration, and we want it to be the best version of itself. But how can we prove that it's the best version of itself when we can't even play the game? We gotta be able to play the game. I know the devs are over there working night and day hard on this, but like I said, we've gone through the blue screen issue before, and it was fixed. So whatever it was in this last patch, I don't know if it was like, a patch built on a previous build or you know without the without all the new patches applied or if it was a patch that was just built and that was just simply an oversight i do programming i do it work i know that things can be simply oversighted so i'm not tripping about that um i'm pretty sure they're gonna get that straightened out and we know that it's normally patch monday now uh or patch tuesday so they'll have that straightened out by the weekend but we just wanted to touch on that if you are still getting blue screens and you know a way to avoid getting the blue screens can you guys please tell me because i don't know i don't have this information and like i just wanted to play pro-am with my boy atl and kobe yesterday and uh, I wasn't able to because I blue screened like two or three times. Now we ultimately got it straight because if you go check your phone and you don't keep checking your phone, you check it one time and then you go in and you come out, you're good. But again, this is something that we don't want because like you, like ATL, the person that sends the invites, I guess, they can keep checking their phone or they can just stay on their phone and let everybody know when we're in the party and uh, we can go. But it's just very difficult to be able to play the game with the game in that state. We gotta be able to check our phones, bro, bro. Come on now, cause we gotta be able to join things, we gotta be able to play. Let's just see if we can get that squared away, see what we can do to get that taken care of. And uh, you know, it is what it is. On to the next thing of news, we got jump shots. People are still saying that jump shot timing appears to be a little bit off. My boy Rampage says that he was busting greens the day before yesterday, and then when he got on the game, he couldn't hit anything. He, he, he began to reevaluate uh, what what he, what it was that he was doing. And shout out to Rampage. He's one of the biggest producers of the show, man. He always finds some good information and he tells me stuff and, you know, like things that I, I otherwise would not put out in the into the broadcast. So shout out to him. But like he said, he was just saying that it's kind of weird that, that yesterday, the day before yesterday, when they made the patch, he was able to shoot this morning after update required, which would be yesterday, uh, which would be Wednesday after update required. He wasn't able to hit any shots. And, and like I said, I don't know if that was user error, if that was him playing, um, he was playing, well, he was playing in my career, and we do know that the game is notorious, especially when you get into the finals. He was in my career in the finals, and when you go into my career into the finals, we know that the game just doesn't allow you to shoot the basketball. You gotta go to the rim every single time, but if you're a slasher, they may cut that off, and so try to force you to shoot. They would never force me to shoot because I'm a sharpshooter, but he's a slasher, he has a sub 83. So maybe that was his issue, but a few other people hit me up and they said they've been having some issues with shooting as well after the update required. I saw my boy one away. He was having some some issues with it. I've not had any issues with it. As you can see in the video yesterday, we were me and T and Paul, we were killing, but 
Again, just because I'm not experiencing the issue does not mean that it's not an issue to be experienced. Again, we went to 2K Labs. They said that the green windows have not changed, but they are timing things to the middle of the green window. So we don't know if, let's say if you and I were timing things to the edge of the green window, it may be a little different for us because if you're timing, let's say the green window is five seconds long. If you're timing your shot to one or five, and that's where you're trying to hit it every time, you would notice a difference every time they change something. If you're timing your shot to three, uh, to two, three, or four, you may not notice as big a difference if you're timing it to three, which is the dead center, as if you're timing it to two, four, or one and five. You understand what I'm saying? So if this is the green window, this is one, this is five, this is two, and this is four, this is three. If you're hitting the pure center every time, you probably won't notice a difference, but if you're hitting the edges, then you'll notice more of a difference than anybody. So let me know in the comments if you guys have noticed anything about people, you know, just you just spontaneously missing um, right now or not. On to the next thing. Uh, we had a little screenshot here from my boy Ramp. And uh, like I said, one of the biggest producers on the show, go to camera now here. And um, he's telling me that, you know, they, they did say uh, Zach Timmerman or, or was it LD2K? One of the two said that we had a definite reduction in the amount of my points required to get badges and you can see that that is absolutely correct uh i think this was nba 2k i don't know who actually put this info out there but they said in the beginning that for your first badge it was 15,000 points um you know after the patch you only need 10,000 points uh the second badge was 20,000 points and now it's 15,000. So you get your two badges way more quickly. Uh, you know, the next badge, the third badge you, is 20, 25,000 points and now it's 20,000. So that's definitely less. And then fourth, uh, fourth is 30,000. Now it's 22,000. Fifth, th it was 35,000. Now it's 25,000. And then sixth through 30th were 40,000 points, but now it's it's less than 30,000, about 27,005, 275. I think that's really good, man, because look, the initial part of the game, we're gonna grind, we're gonna figure out how to get these badges, we're gonna figure out how to get these points, and we're gonna push, push, push. As the year progresses and more people get the game, people want to get to the park. They want to get to online competitive modes and what that plant, you know, player versus player modes. That's what they want to get to. They want. They don't want to spend their time in my career. The people that want to spend their time in my career, they want to go ahead and do well. So they don't. No, this is not going to bother anybody. I see this as nothing but a positive. Number one, this is going to let people get their badges faster, get the competitive modes faster, get to spending that VC faster because we need boost. You can't play the game without boost, and and get to doing other things more quickly, which is going to make them money including but not limited to making other players like now that i know that i don't have to do an extra thirteen thousand or extra twelve five for for these like i said it's not a huge difference but it's enough to where i'm like yeah okay well that's not much more than it was you know to get your third badge or whatever and it's definitely not much more than it was to get you to get your fifth badge because like i said before everything before um i came to the park i had all my badges there was no way i was going to go out there without without my badge so i played the game for a week straight and uh you know i was able to do that not everybody's able to do that we want more people in the game in the park we don't want people having to sit there and feel like they're being doomed to play my career we just want people to play the game and to want to play the game and to be able to enjoy the game and the faster you can get your badges the more quickly you can enjoy the game i got my center took him to wreck i'm getting like almost a whole bar every single time i play a wreck game but i have to go in there with somebody that actually can protect me because if i don't i'm gonna get slapped anyway on to our next order of news we got my boy mike wong talking again here and uh oh mikey Old Mikey is talking about the unpluckable badge. And uh, pretty much what he's saying is, let's go back so you can see his tweet. The actual tweet is, if you're still getting ripped too often with Hall of Fame unpluckable, it's possible that you're over dribbling too close to the defense. You might want to try being more efficient with your moves and make sure you have enough space to pull them off. I would normally agree with you, young Mikey, but um, but my boy Toon, Toon said it best. If you're not following Toons, you need to follow Toons. Not even dribbling. Just bring the ball up and it gets plucked. One reach. Exactly, Toons. I couldn't have said it better 
myself. Now somebody said, talk that talk, Baluba. Uh, you know, that's one with knowledge, my boy. Now my boy, one with knowledge, I understand. I understand you saying that, but you're wrong in this case, my guy. I, I normally say, let's see, let's see what uh what what my boy Grandmaster Sensei Swan said. How about don't let low-rated defensive bills get instant steals on high-rated ball handling bills? There are plenty of clips, people not over dribbling, etc. etc. I couldn't have said it better myself, young Swan Swan. Like that's exactly what's happening. You got people with a 35 steal. Uh, they're stealing the ball from people that are highly rated and uh, other people can't even get steals and they don't even have anything else. Let's see what Cole the Man says, man. Cole the Man says, no, I'll have the ball in my hand for two seconds. People will spam square because they know there's no consequence. I agree. People only hit square button because there is no consequence. So these guys are right in this context. I know what Mike is trying to say. But we're not over dribbling, Mike. We're just bringing the ball up the court. We're 15 feet away from the person. We make one hesitation because you can speed boost out of the hesitation. They press square. They instantly close that gap, and they just straight, straight rip you. And it's crazy. But somebody like myself, I've got Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame reach, reach and take your cookies, and, and it doesn't work for me, not even on centers. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, a lot of people were not happy with this type of response. And like I said, man, I definitely understand where Mike's coming from, but I more understand where the people that actually are playing the game on a daily basis against people that are above average or above just a regular bomb level are playing the game. You can just hit the button once and you're gonna get ripped. It is what it is. It doesn't seem like something that they feel like is an issue. I wish I could find that clip of that center dribbling on the dude, going through traffic, not being able to get ripped, and then did a spinning, whirling dervish layup, but I couldn't find it. But it is what it is. On to the next story. Last night, Annoying and his squad played a game versus Flight and his squad for like 600 bucks. It's a little wages. So the teams were Annoying, g Sice, and Smurf against um, Flight, Mario and their center. And this was the outcome. Size, please. Oh, this no, should no. be free cash, you, bro. You do you have confidence? I got confidence. Let's get, get this money. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get this money, G. Game one will begin with both teams exchanging buckets inside with their centers to knock off all of the rust and the nerves. But this is the Big Greens Network, where the forecast is always Big Greens with a chance of whites. And that's exactly what we got as Mario with his mindset hits a Big Green. Annoying hits a fader from hella deep. And just to show that it was no mistake, he shoots a Big Green to show that he is the best sharpshooter in 2K history. At least according to him, Mario says, I beg to differ, sir. I'm the Real Mario, I'm a Wario, I'm a gonna win. G Sice had had enough. He said that he will not be denied, but flight full white hits a full white right in the annoying's face. G Sice says anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. And now, at this point, G Sice has had enough. He says, I will take over this game and common sense must prevail as he hits a three from Limitless. Mario says, what is common sense by hitting another fader? g Sight says, this is common sense and this is what it looks like. Flight White said, no sir, a mid-range is common sense. This is what it looks like. And that 2020 g Sight says, no, a mid-range with a floater soft off the glass in the lane, damn near in the lane, is what common sense looks like. You guys have lost the art of the mid-range. I don't know what's happening, but right in the game two. Game two begins with Annoying putting in his bid for one of the best sharpshooters in the game as he hits a big green from the top and from the corner. But Flight Full White is applying for a name change by hitting the one green. G Sice hits a green, but not to be outdone. Flight Full White hits yet another contested green right in Mario's grill. I'm not gonna lie, man. We're gonna have to put some respect on Flight's name. This man was hooping. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, like, he's definitely improved from last year, but Mario's right back in it and says, I'm the best sharpshooter. Flight Full White says, change my name to Flight Green as he hits, well, I don't know exactly what happened there, but he's definitely on the list to get his name changed as they take game two, 21 to 17. Game three would start with Flight Full White finalizing the paperwork for his name change as he hits yet another green. And Mario says, if you're gonna have the name, I'll just exchange it with Annoying Whites. Flight goes to the rim, and yes, it's Flight 
full green, and it's gonna be Mario full whites as he hits yet another full white from hella deep. The real Mario says his mindset is this, and that would be the end of his positivity after he gives up big green, after big green, after big fucking green to G Sice. Bro, why would you leave him open? Mario would try to get some semblance of redemption by hitting a big green and hitting flight for another full white from the corner before taking the most sellout shot in NBA 2K comp history. And now, the most unsung player of the series, Smurf, gets a steal. I'm going to stop the video right here, bro. Don't y'all think it's funny that the only steal in the whole damn series came by a center? Like, does nobody find this hilarious? I find this completely ironic as I've made a rant about this yesterday. Continuing to sell the entirety of the bag, Mario gives up a big ass green to G Sice, who has like 30 points over the entire series, and G Sice hits a clutch three from the corner, going four for five on the game and winning the 600. Man, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. I had a ball doing this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I feel like, you know, good comp games like this are. It's just exciting. Now, we also had some other comp action, but them guys got 30. Uh, it was for like 1,500 bucks. You can see it right here where Cap is. Uh, it's like a 1,500 bucks. And um, it, was a, it was a quick 3-0 sweep. I didn't do the whole commentary on that series because it was just too long. But what I'm going to do is start just taking clips breaking the game down and doing it like this. If you guys like me doing stuff like this and you enjoyed this video and this breakdown, you thought it was hilarious, hey, give me a like on the video and uh, I'm gonna holler at y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy Jay Easy, AKA Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Hello! Please six out this mug.